podcast is back, episode 35, and we have a very special guest with us, Chris Salona. I can't believe <laughs> Here it. Here I am. We're back. <laughs> we finally got him. His damn schedule finally opened up for him. I'm your host, Ethan Shalloway, and I got the beautiful guest, Chris Salona. Oh, I got downgraded to guest host this week, huh? <laughs> no, you're a celebrity guest, actually. <laughs> yeah, I would rather... Something like that. <laughs> I was trying to... Uh, I was trying to... Uh, the other day record a commercial in a way for us yep believe it believe it or not i was trying to record something to send to drew to snip snip up and i said i said something and i was like yeah you can support our patreon and it was i was supposed to say so we could uh get like good guests on here but so i but i said so we could get better hosts and (laughs) well i mean that's that's a worthy cause because you could (laughs) do so much better than the two of us and i was like i was like yeah you're gonna get some celebrity hosts and i was like oh wait Oh, uh, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you guys want better hosts, too, so we'll get that, too. I mean, I want better hosts, so, you know, it's <laughs> nothing that we haven't already thought. Oh, man. So, it is currently Wednesday, uh, I don't know, November 10th or something November like the that. 10th, indeed. Yeah. So, uh, it's hump day, but it's coming out on Friday. Um, let's do our daily check-in. Um, let's start with Chris. I see you're wearing a, a nice bright blue shirt for the people that are watching on YouTube. You can see it, but if you can't, Chris, what does your shirt say? <laughs> My shirt says life is happy. <laughs> I love that. I and have a very similar shirt in a bright yellow. Yes. Uh, I remember you wore that shirt once and it inspired me to purchase this one. I got the blue one and, uh, you know, I, I think at different I should points, put, should I put mine on? No, I, I think you might have to. Um, I, you know, I, as, as you go down the road of life, I think that statement has uh, varying degrees of validity. And, uh, you know, I'm finally wearing the shirt again because I'm, I'm, I'm believing <laughs> I'm believing this to be true. There, were, there was a while during the year 2020 where I uh, I did not wear this shirt very often because I didn't believe it to be true. But we're back. Life life is pretty happy. You know, um, it's it's a good experience to be had. And uh, I'm uh, I'm just out here trying to experience it on this Wednesday. So. I totally agree. Um, life is happy. I wish I had my shirt on. I was, <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. I went and put it on for all the podcasts. So you, you can't see it. And They'll never know. It. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it, it is. It is a beautiful life we have. Fragile life at times, but it really is um, a beautiful opportunity. So I'm glad that we all can be here to share this time together uh, for another jam packed uh, hour or however long this will go. But um, yeah, I'm doing pretty well myself. Good. Uh, it's been a it's been a busy kind of weird week, a little disjointed, but uh, the weather has been really nice. Um, and you know, I work outside in the trees, uh, tree cutting industry, and you know, part time. And it was it's a beautiful day to be cutting trees. This is the time where you want to be outside, falling tree, felling trees, and cutting it up. I mean, you're not sweating all that much. There's not a lot of leaves and foliage on it, so you can actually. It's just a good time to do that type of work. Yeah, I'll tell you. Um, I, I I wholeheartedly agree. You know, the weather's weather's pretty good, but you know, if there is one thing that's sticking in my craw right now, it's uh, we we talked about it last week, but we're in it now. There's no going back. The sun is setting at about four thirty every day, and um, oh yes, that's... I wanted to ask you about that. How was this past couple of days? Now that daylight savings kicked in, the only good day of daylight savings time is the day you wake up on the Sunday and you're like, holy shit. It's early because you, you, you get an extra hour of sleep, so you feel good, and then you're going about your business. You're like, wow, I have all day to do all of these great things. And then the sun sets at 4.30, and you realize it's not so great. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm perpetually disgruntled at that. I was really upset with it on, uh, on Monday. I did the thing where you walked into the gym, and it was sunny, and you walk out you know, at 5.15, and it's pitch black outside. So I wasn't super happy about that. Um, another thing... This is kind of like a like a niche thing, but uh, Ethan, I know you'll be able to understand this. You know what I fucking hate? <laughs> What's that, Chris? When you go to the gym and you're following a program, a program that prescribes your 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 weights, your sets, your reps, and, and your volume and everything. So you, you're following the program because that's why you you filled out the program. That's why you're right. doing the program is to follow it. And then you get some random gym brother walking up to you after a set and is like, oh, man, that looked light. You need to do more. I was like, it's on the fucking sheet. That's why I'm doing this. Like, if, if I was supposed to do more, the sheet would have told me to do more. Yeah. Well, Chris, what do you mean? You don't lift as heavy as you can every time <laughs> you go in the gym? I thought... 
Isn't that how you train? Don't you do it? Don't you run as fast? Yeah, as you exactly. Can that's where you're supposed. Apparently, you that's come. where you're supposed to do. I mean, all these guys can't even bend down to touch their ankles, let alone their toes. And here they are telling me, "Oh, you got more weight in that." Like, of course I do. Like, I understand, but like, yeah. that's not what today is that's for. That's not how you work out. No, at, at optimal or uh, at like, yeah, peak. Uh, no, that's not, that's not how it happens. Not how, and then you get a, you, you get the people, yeah. Then you get the people hurt. that walk up to you and they want to tell you their life story during during your rest in between sets. Like I take oh, I take my rest my very gears. seriously. All right, Chris, uh, how about this? So the last two days happened twice. Someone in in our group we've been we're training, and they brought up uh, multiple things, but in in a very uh, short answer, they brought up if the Earth was flat, and they're a flat Earther, and we, <laughs> and, and, and we got into the can I of mean, worms. Oh my gosh! Just and like, yeah, dude. So many, so much, so much conversation I did not need to have. I mean, my coach was like, "You trying to bench?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm trying to." I was like, "Yeah, it's <laughs> trying here." <laughs> but we had start talking about, uh, you know, gra- she does. They don't believe in gravity, the mag- magnetism, and. Yeah, oh my man. god! How, how, did, how are they? How are they standing there? What do they think? What do they think's going on? Magnetism, Chris. There's something. See, there's, there's all these people. A, there, there's all these a, people out there, man. It's, it's crazy. It's, they it they is, think they know different. They know better. Yeah, it is. It is really interesting. The the yeah conspiracy theories. You know, what I mean, all or just theories in general. There's a lot of shit out there. Yeah. But what do we know for sure? We there's know a couple we things a we know of, for sure. Uh, we, say, we, we do know that this podcast is supported by some great yep. individuals. And uh, as a little caveat, if, if you guys don't enjoy um, Ethan and I, you know, just um, uh, just railing against, you know, the, the detriments of society, I'm going to put a little challenge out there into the world if you guys want to put a stop to this. So currently right now we're at 13 top level Patreon supporters. If we can get to 15 by next week, we won't we won't complain. Okay, we, we will not, we will, I won't bitch about daylight savings. I won't, I won't complain about how people drive slow in the left lane or whatever, or how, you know, I can never seem to make my coffee right in the morning, whatever. So if, if we can get two more between now and then, I won't complain anymore. Um, so as of right now, wow. the, the, the first 13 are in the book. And as we well know, uh, those individuals that are making this podcast possible, their names are Kayla Jean, Sue, Alexis Shannon, Release, Laura Nyreen, Jade Mercado, Marianne, Sonny Mashburn, Shannon Gorgon, Victor Schaefer, Jamie Lynn, Fuck Soup, and our number one fan from Australia. So those are the 13. And if you want to shut me up, join up. It's uh, (laughs) It's as simple as that. It's very transactional. As they say, put your money where your mouth is if you hate it. Or, I I was going to say, on the flip side, if you're that 15th guy or girl, you get to pick what Chris gets to be mad about, and he'll make a five minute rant on whatever. I'll, I'll do want. that. Yeah, totally. I'm, I'm in for that. We go both ways. We'll go both ways here. So if you have a special request and you and you decide to be a patron, Chris will either shut up or he won't shut up. That's up to you guys. <laughs> I don't know which one is worse, but that is up to you. You hold the key. It is you... fun. To, I just, I just, I just want to like, you know, give you a topic, and it's just like in whose lines. And I was like, all right, like you know, do a funny bit. It's like, all right, Chris, like. I need you to get irrationally mad about this. Like, come up with a few reasons. And yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty good at being disgruntled about things, which is not a good skill to have. Um, I I don't recommend uh, practicing, um, just because I think yeah. we we should spend most of our time, you know, exhibiting joy and being a fountain yeah. as opposed to being a drain on society. But you know, well, what are you gonna do sometimes? Yeah, it's all hyperbole. I mean, it's all, you know. All right, <clears throat> so got got our thank yous out of the way. Got our daily weekly check-in out of the way uh is there anything else before we get into the uh the meat and potatoes as we like to have been calling or the shitty cup of coffee the shitty cup of also... coffee which is not so shitty today and uh ethan this is a topic i know we've been we've been uh anxious to do it for for some months now and and, and i right. think you know what we're about to talk about today um is something that i think we can all relate to and we can all kind of understand and i also think you know you kind of have to be in the right frame of mind to discuss these things um so you know we're feeling today that we're we're in a good position to kind of uh you know open up this discussion um and you know it's got a lot to do with um you know the the scene and, and there's a lot in the scene and there's a lot that these musicians dealt with in terms of you know addiction mental illness and struggle and just you know how you navigate those fields and 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 i think today's a good day to kind of have a discussion just about 
you know, how the music relates to that and really just kind of thinking about, um, you know, the human condition and, and really just everything that goes into it. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk about this because I think, you know, a lot of these songs, you know, if there's any songs that have stopped us in our tracks as music fans, oftentimes they're the ones that are discussing heavier topics. Um, so today, you know, we have the opportunity to kind of, you know, talk about a couple of those songs and a couple of those writers and, yeah. you know, what they mean to us and, and what those themes are that exist within those songs. Yeah, and I think um, uh, kind of what we were talking about early uh, earlier is, you know, life life is happy, life is beautiful, but there are times where it is very difficult. And the older you get, the more, um, you know, the more joy you kind of experience, but also it's just the more experience, as we like to call it, and that experiences are not always great. So you kind of build up. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of darkness in this life, and and I think that um, there's a good quote. I'm not I'm not exactly sure. You'll probably know, but like exploring the darkness in life is gives you a lot of insight on um, life and the feelings that the emotions that are there, and um, and you can learn a lot from those dark times. They don't they don't just have to be dark and um, yeah, I think we want to kind of get into it. We we wanted to do an episode um, during the month of September, and uh, we kind of wanted to make sure that we were in the right spot for it. So um, I'm excited to kind of talk about just I don't know the hard times, Chris. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 I totally agree. And as you know, I'm certainly not old by any stretch, nor have I ever considered myself to be wise. But I really do think there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, that quote that you just said, and, and the older I get, the more I realize that, you know, I, I think it is important as a person to experience the entire array of emotions that are available, you know, in life and, you know, the positive and the negative and, you know, what that dichotomy is and how they relate to one another and how they can kind of accentuate one another. Because I really do think that, you know, persevering through a difficult time can really uh, accentuate the good times because you kind of you have that perspective and I think it's all about developing perspective and and I think you know in how this discussion relates to grunge rock as they say and, and music in general there's there's one song that's always kind of stuck with me and there's one mm-hmm. song that I very vividly remember hearing for the first time and, and how it made me feel and and the thoughts that it brought about in my head and that's River of Deceit by Mad Season um and Mad Season, the Mad Season project is really interesting. And, and the inception of that group, if, if you don't know, really kind of, um, you know, exists within this conversation that we're having. So a uh, brief background for those who might not be aware, but um, Mike McCready, obviously the guitarist in Pearl Jam, uh, he went to rehabilitation in 1994 uh, in Minnesota, and he met a bassist named John Baker Saunders there. And they hit it off and, and they kind of decided that once they were out and once they had achieved sobriety, um, that they wanted to make music together. So they recruited Barrett Martin, the drummer from the Screaming Trees, uh, and they were starting to put together some demos and then push came to shove and Mike ended up recruiting um, Lane Staley, uh, you know, the famous famous vocalist, singer-songwriter from Alice in Chains, as we all know, uh, you know, to kind of round out the band. And at the time, you know, Mike's thoughts were, as he said later in interviews, that, you know, he was hopeful that by putting Lane in a position where he was going to create music and play alongside sober musicians, that that might um, help Lane achieve sobriety at some point. And, and, and I think, you know, before we even get into river of deceit, that's an interesting concept that I think river of deceit talks about too, is, is like how much, how much is people that were able to help other people during the difficult times? And, you know, is it more, us making an effort to help other people or does it really have to come from that person that they want to be helped and that they want to be in that open environment where they can be helped and it's you know and there's no there's no right or wrong answer there's no one side or the other but it's such an interesting concept yeah towing the line of um you know waiting for somebody to reach out or you know kind of forcing trying to force someone to change and better themselves is, is tough because I mean, if somebody's drowning, they can't, they can't necessarily, you know, reach out a hand and you got to grab them or something. But when people are, you know, to see true change, it does need to come within, um, within 
you know said person and and it's it's not it's not so easy it's not as easy as um you know i, I was gonna say it's not always, it's always so easy as being around them and be and all the time i mean like i said it does it does come from the person i think that we've both we would both agree but um yeah you're chal- you're faced with the challenge of how much how much can you I don't know, we were talking about it earlier. It, it's just, it's kind of tough. And I feel like I'm having a hard time putting into words, like, just what that looks like. Because th- I guess the situations are different if we're dealing with drugs or if we're dealing with alcohol, or if we're dealing with just, um, you know, general um, anxiety and depression and for different other situations or home values. Like, there's, and, you know, maybe changing isn't always the reason or the um, solution either. You know, it could be a situation that, is not something that they can just change either. Um, so there's a lot of kind of there's, there's patience involved that that needs to be there. Um, yeah, and I guess uh, do you do you want to go over some of the lyrics for uh, the River of Deceit? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, and and I think River of Deceit, the song, has kind of one of the more fascinating. It's one of the more fascinating pieces of work for me from from the genre and from the era, just because I think it juxtaposes a lot of those dichotomies that exist. And it's like, you know, you have the dichotomy of solitude versus isolation, and then you have the dichotomy of, you know, am I responsible or is the world responsible? And and obviously, you know, with the song leading into, you know, you know, the, yeah. the main hook in the song is my pain is self-chosen, you know, at least so the prophet says, and then my pain is self-chosen, at least I believe it to be, um, you know, and that, and that's always kind of struck me. And it's just, it, it, it gets you to think about, you know, when you struggle with things like how responsible are we as individuals for our own struggles? Because I think, you know, that is a, my perspective on it is that it's not, it's not that simple. And and I think a lot of times we aren't responsible because I think, you know, genetically, biologically, there's things that we could be predisposed to. Um, And additionally, you know, we're moving around the world and, you know, our day-to-day lives and we're exposed to so many things that can change our lives through no action or inaction of our own. And, and, And sometimes, you know, things are just, you're just impacted by things, but that's always been interesting uh, for me to think about. But what what are your thoughts on that? And I think, you know, I think everybody's kind of got a thought on, you know, whether or not our pain and whether or not the things we struggle with are self chosen. Yeah, I think you know you you set it up really well. I love the dichotomy of, you know, responsibility and the dichotomy of isolation and loneliness, and um, it is it is I would say it's it is very complex and. Um, you know, I guess it kind of, I would say that it definitely ties into, um, the other, the la- later lyrics where, you know, the only direction we flow is down. So, you know, depending on where you start is not going to be, um, that, you know, is it's never so simple as it's your fault. You don't just stumble upon, you know, uh, alcoholism. Like that's not how alcoholism starts. It starts from at first, you know, you're drinking because it's fun. You know, you're drinking because, you know, I mean, we we both we both enjoy adult beverages like anybody else, and we both had our time in colleges, and and there it's a very innocent act. And then, but then when things happen, and and you know, it becomes um, a little bit different. It's like the only way that that river flows is down, and um, and so I think that yeah, it is. It's 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 very it's very tricky, and I think. I mean, there's a lot of ownership when it comes to um, certain addictions and certain problems um, that is going to be the only way to kind of pull yourself out of it. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm trying to think of, it's like a few different analogies or depends yeah, where you want to pinpoint I think- in on. Totally. And and I think one thing, one thing that's always drawn me to this song is how it evaluates, you know, a hypothetical situation like that with such um, matter of fact objectivity. Whereas, you know, when you find yourself in a situation where you're struggling with something, I think, um, I think all of us can relate at one point or another, whatever it is that we've been struggling with. I mean, that objectivity is non-existent. And I think that's the hardest thing, speaking from my experience, going back to that first thought of, you know, whether it's up to myself to, you know, be open to being helped or whether it's up to those around me to help me, you know, the objectivity 
is gone in that situation with whatever you're struggling with. And it makes it so hard for you to understand that it is just as simple as talking to somebody or it is just as simple as, you know, letting somebody into your world who wants to help. Because I think there's times where, you know, depression, mental illness, addiction, whatever, they're all tricky in that sense that they get you to believe that you deserve to do those things on your own and you deserve to be isolated and you deserve to have to face the consequences on your own because I think they get you to believe that, you know, you chose this life for yourself. It's so your it's, fault. Yeah. Yeah. So it's up to you and you alone, um, which it's, it's never that simple as we said. And it's, but it's, it's such a difficult thing. And it goes back to that thing. Have, have you ever done that thing, Ethan, where, you know, a friend comes to you for advice or something and you can see their situation and you give them advice and it's, it's good advice. You know it to be good advice, but you also know three, three months down the road, if you're in the same problem, you're not very likely to take your own advice. Yeah. I think a, I do that all the time. And I think that's, that's, yeah. that's emblematic I mean, of this discussion, you know? Oh yeah. And the very the clear example is going to be within dating. I think relationship advice, 100%. Outs, outsiders, you know, give the best. It's so simple. It's so mm -hmm. simple from the outside looking in. In yeah. a lot of these cases, in a lot of cases of addiction or depression, the the, the answer to the outsiders is simple. Just, you know, you got to break up with them. You know, it's, it's toxic. Just don't talk to them or, mm -hmm. you know, don't use your money on this, you know, yeah, or go to a meeting or talk to somebody or see a mental mm -hmm. health counselor or something. Yeah. And it, and it is really easy, but it is um, so difficult for the people involved to see that in the fog of war, as we like to say. So, yeah, I, I, I know that, uh, you know, all too well for a lot of different reasons. And um, a lot of times when you're in the situation, I think that there's a lot of as they like to say, mental gymnastics or some some kind of justifying of why you're doing, you know, oh, well, I, it's different. I can do it. I can I can fix this or like it's not going to be the same or like I, you know, this isn't going to this isn't going to be a tailspin. This isn't going to be a gateway drug for me. Like I'm I'm not like that. But, um, you know, that's when uh, you know, that's when the pressures and stuff kind of sneak up on you. And all of a sudden you're a little bit farther down the road than you expected because it's just like when you get in the ocean, Chris, you know, you get in the ocean, your parents says, all right, you got to swim right in front of me, swim, swim within the flags. You know, you go out there, you're playing around, you look up and you don't see your parents. Well, you're, you're 50 feet down, down the shore because yeah. the tide is taking you and you can't feel mm -hmm. that tide. That's not something that you can like, you know, sense unless it's like a really ripping and roaring. But, um, but yeah, it just kind of, all of a sudden you're farther away than you've ever been and you did not see it. It's like growing your hair out. <laughs> yeah, you lose track, you lose track of your landmarks. I think that's a great analogy. It's like, you know, you're in the water and, 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 and I think a lot of, a lot of destructive things and horrible things in life and struggles, you don't realize that you're struggling until, you know, until like you said, you know, you're, you're pretty far out in the waters and, and, and you have, you might have a moment of clarity where you're like, wow, like. I'm a long ways out here, but it's that weird thing where you come to for a second, you realize that you're out there and you realize that you're not thinking clearly about it. But a lot of times in my experience, that's still not enough for me to be like, okay, like I really need to listen to these people with what they're saying, or I really just need to open myself up to hearing what they have to say, you know, because they are there to help me. And, and I, I've always been lucky that I'm, I'm blessed with a great support network of friends and family uh, that I can turn yeah. to. Um, but it's, you know, for me, it's, it's hard enough even with that network. So, you know, for those that aren't lucky enough to have the, that network, it's really, you know, must be a really isolative experience. So, you know, we're having this conversation um, now, and you know, sometimes it comes out of the blue. I know Chris. Sometimes, like we're talking, all of a sudden we get into a deeper conversation, and and I love it because we don't shy away from it. Because although we're not experiencing it, um, as I've been thinking about recently, like when you have those conversations, um, there's a lot of learning that happens in the middle of the conversation. Um, so you know, you know, you don't have to be going through it, or the person has to be going through it, but. Um, you know, having conversations um, allows you to equip yourself. I feel, and and just like you were saying, you know, you know, reaching out or having a support system, and how that works. I think that our page does a really good job of a uh, platform because sometimes it is difficult to 
be vulnerable with certain people and to ask for help and um that's also why it's hard to try and help somebody if they if you if you say they're if people aren't reaching out so um you know the animated uh anonymous yeah, anonymity anonymity um, yeah of the uh, the page and and the platform that has grown around this genre um it really is a beautiful thing to i guess have behind us you know have support us um through you know times of trouble uh, yeah no i i think that's exactly correct and, and and you made a really important point with you know kind of talking about how whether you know you might not be going through these things but it is important to you know to talk about them and to to try to understand them as best you can but also you know to give respect to the fact that you never know when something like this is going to happen. So for me, for example, mm-hmm. in my personal experience, for some reason, I thought, you know, that as I made it through my teenage years, you know, if I hadn't struggled in, in, in a certain way with, you know, depression or anxiety, that I wasn't going to struggle with it. Like as I, as I grew up to be a, an adult, quote unquote, that I thought that I, I had made it through. And, you know, it's kind of that that cliche, like, you know, don't ever think that it can't happen to you. Uh, and it makes me think of another song um, within the genre that is um, another one that's provoked a lot of thought along with River of Deceit. And that's Fell on Black Days by Soundgarden. Um, and, and I think that first, you know, that first verse, whatsoever I feared has come to life, whatsoever I fought off became my life. Just when every day seemed to greet me with a smile, sunspots have faded, and now I'm doing time. And I and I think, you know, it is important to ha- develop that perspective that you realize that you know these struggles when they they come to you and they they don't make sense and they don't ever come at an opportune time because there is no good time and and you know just to be able to have that understanding that it is possible not not so you're walking around fearing the moment that you know, you start to struggle, but just so you understand that it can happen. So you're equipped with the tools, um, to handle it and to, and, and, and to do something about it and to, before and you just get so too you, down. Yeah. Too far, and that you understand yeah. and that you understand it's okay to feel that way and that it's okay to lean on somebody and it's okay to reach out. It's, it's the yeah. strongest thing you can do at that I time. I mean, that, you know the conversations like this that we have within our, you know, on the page and in the comments, and and every time you know what it does is it normalizes you to talking. It allows you, you know, you become a little bit more vulnerable each time. And I mean, this is the first time we're doing it on this page, and it is, you know, or on this podcast. Right? I mean, you know, it it may feel different in a year if we're talking about the same thing. You know, people might yeah. know a lot more about us, but like the idea is that like the more you talk about it, you're going to be it doesn't become as scary or it doesn't become as, um, yeah, it's just a little bit more, you feel a little more secure in who you're talking with and what, and, and that is, that makes the difference when it happens, basically. 100%. You know, those, those small things like will mean a lot when you're in a position like that. So Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, kind of thinking about it as we're having this conversation, I think... One of, if not the greatest gift that music has given me and the most empowerment it's given me is just to be able to think about my emotions and to be able to uh, be vulnerable about them. Because a lot of times, you know, the most poignant songs and some of our favorite songs in in all of music, not even just grunge, are, are the songs where, you know, the songwriters have been so unbelievably vulnerable, whether it's about their emotions or something that's happened to them. And, and I think, you know, it's just kind of, um, it's one of those things that, you know, you, you hear somebody doing it and and you listen to these songs and you're impacted by them. It kind of, it it shows you that it's really okay to, you know, express how you're feeling. And and I think as, as men, you know, there's, there's a lot of rhetoric in the world and, and I think it's being chipped away at as the days go by, which is great, but there's a lot of rhetoric out there that really, you know, is not particularly welcoming to men sharing these things and and i just think that you know the old age um you know expectation of men to be you know hardened and like you know men don't cry men don't you know talk about their emotions like you know fathers don't tell their their children that they love you know just different things like that um you know i i think music has been great for me you know to kind of help chip away at that at those things that you kind of learn from other parts of society and 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 that's something that as you talked about earlier 
I always want to try to do with the page and and I'm glad that we're doing it with the podcast to have these conversations and just, you know, show people, you know, the, the, these songwriters have been doing it and just give them a space where if, if they're inclined to share, or if they're inclined to share their thoughts or whatever it may be that, you know, not only is it, is it welcomed, but it's, it's a very healthy thing to do. It is really, when you say it like that, it is, it is interesting. These songs are, I mean, you know, Chris Cornell is like pouring his heart out about, you know, tough times. I mean, there is a lot of, Trans, it's like the most transparent form of literature in a way. Totally. Um, it seems so, yeah, because it's like, you know, in the middle of it. Um, I feel like when people write what memoirs or I feel like they're out of it, you know, like the bo- like books, like it comes out so far uh, later that it's like after it or, you know, people make movies and it's like after 10 years or something, I feel like the music came out during it. And it's, it's very, it's a very like uh, immediate it's kind so of, raw and it's it's unfiltered yeah. and it's uncensored. Right, and which is you know, I think what we're going for with this conversation uh, the best we can and um so if you're out there listening, um I think our goal was to be pretty raw and um and just see where it goes because Chris, I know me and you have these conversations all the time and they come out of nowhere and they go wherever they go. It's not it's sometimes it's about, you know, being upset sometimes about being why we're happy there's there's a whole lot of different ways that the conversation goes but the nice part is um we're not afraid to have those conversations so if you're out there listening i I just hope that um you know you can have somebody that you talk to and you can feel close enough to kind of expand your um you know i guess emotional capacity in a way but like just bounce ideas off of and like i said learn and grow in conversation it's like reading a book and i think i've said this on the podcast too where like you know these like long conversation it's like it's very insightful and it's it's almost like reading a book where you you know you finish it up and you kind of you take some stuff away from it and you have things that you remember and you kind of highlight in your head so um and that's the best way to be prepared when certain situations come because there's a lot of people i know that you know it's so foreign when it comes up and they have that idea that it never can happen and then they're ill-equipped and then that's when um you know things can spiral or that's where things can get out of hand and um for you know not 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 the best reason something that can be prevented so yeah i i um, i'm happy to have this chris i'm happy to have yeah, be here talking with I, you i would totally agree and 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 i definitely you know, I agree and I, I co-sign and I echo everything you said. And, and, and really, you know, every single conversation that I have with you or that I have with other people about topics like this, I, I like you said, I, I leave it with, with another, with a new perspective or a, a different understanding, um, you know, of something. And I think, you know, the more understanding that you have in your toolbox, the more well-equipped you are to, you know, help your your friends and your family and, and others, but also to help yourself. And, and I think, you know, conversation and discussion is, is one of the most valuable tools that we do have to learn about the world and learn about ourselves and learn about how, you know, the world and ourselves interact with one another. And, you know, I just want to echo what you said where, you know, to not be afraid to have these conversations, particularly if you are struggling with something. And, and you know, I would just like to put out there that, you know, our direct messages are, are always a, a place where people can come. Uh, people have utilized that in the past, and we've been able to have some really good conversations that have been mutually beneficial. And I, and I think, you know, it just comes down to, you know, each day, you know, if you just wake up with, the, with two intentions, I think number one, uh, you know, the intention of, of just being kind to people. Um, but then secondly, the intention of, you know, trying to do one or two things that day to understand more, um, you know, whether it be understand more about your situation or the situation of others or understand how you can help people, how you can help yourself. Um, you know, I think, I think that growth is such a positive thing and it's such an important thing. And I think this area of, you know, mental health and, and, and just different ways that we struggle is, is something that's, you know, not always a part of that. You know, we're always looking to be, be better at our job. We're always looking to, you know, make more money or, you know, cook a better meal for the family or, you know, find a faster way to get to work or whatever. Um, you know, but I, I think if we spend some time in this neighborhood, you know, I, I, I definitely think it'll, it, it can be very helpful. 
um, you know, for yourself and for those that you discuss it with. And, you know, it's really just important that, you know, this is a type of conversation that can exist and it doesn't have to be a big to do because, you know, we all, we all have these things in our lives. You know, we all, we all have these emotions that we deal with and nobody's, nobody's wrong for having them. Nobody's weak for having them. No one's weak for, you know, wanting to talk to somebody about them. I think those are the, the greatest things you can do in, in, in those times of need because, you know, life is cyclical in a weird way. You know, if so you have a friend who's, who's struggling with something or if you're struggling with something, you feel weird about reaching out, you know, things, things always come around and, and you, know, you can look forward to the time that you'll be able to help them through something. So we're all, you know, we're all here largely because of the, you know, the help of the people we have around us. So I think that's another takeaway to have. <clears throat> and another kind of one last thought I have is within the conversations and like the, it's like everything you said, I think one thing that it does develop is patience and Patience is such a beautiful thing, and I feel like, uh, you know, I, I you know not to toot our own horn, but I I I think that you you're a very patient and good listener, and I become a very patient person, and and out of patience, I think is is love, and there's a lot of love. Like when you become a patient person, and you can like and kind of wade through certain these situations, there's a lot of love that comes out of it, and um, you know that is just kind of changing helps helps you change from the inside in a really um great way so yeah uh we're just out here trying to grow grow love and in, in a in a great way um and yeah i i think that i mean it's i don't know that's all i got <laughs> those are like those are the last things i think you could grow patience and patience grows grows love so that's that's the yeah i i agree tagline you know patience patience with other people love towards other people but i think you know something that's overlooked is you know patience with yourself and and love towards yourself you know right especially when you're struggling with things and you know i think a lot of times going back to what i said earlier you know just as you know we tend to not take the advice we give to other people you know we would never be as impatient and and as potentially callous to other people as we have the capacity to be to ourselves. So I think, you know, it's always good to have a reminder in there that I think we're all doing better than we think we are. And we're all a lot stronger than we think we are. And I think we owe ourselves that patience and that love when things get difficult. Yeah. Well said. Well, I'm really happy that, um, you know, we've had countless discussions like this on the phone, you know, over the years of our friendship. And it's it's nice to kind of, uh, you know, invite other people into the discussion and, uh, you know, to have it in a way that, you know, somebody might listen and, 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 and gain an impact or gain a perspective from it. And, and certainly, as I said, you know, this conversation is not, you know, not limited to ec- episode 35 of the Grunge Bible podcast. This is something that you live every day. And, uh, you know, we're, as I said, we're always here, uh, you know, to continue that conversation and to listen uh, and to connect people with resources and, you know, just to kind of be there because, uh, you know, that's, that's all we can do at times. And I think that's the most important thing we can do. But, um, Ethan, like I said, you know, it's really great to, uh, you know, have this discussion in, in a new way with a little twist with, uh, you know, with, with some more people in the room, uh, contributing to the conversation. Absolutely. And I, if you guys are still listening, um, and it wasn't necessarily the episode that you expected, uh, we thank you for your patience and your commitment to the podcast and to listening to us and, Like I said, if you can take one thing out of it, then it was good. And we promise we'll have a lot of other episodes that won't be about this. But we will sprinkle them in here and there because they are important. And, you know, it's our podcast. (laughs) (laughs) It absolutely is. This this is our podcast and we intend to use it. That's right. Sometimes you wake up dangerously. We woke up feeling emotional, (laughs) so we wanted to talk about it. Yeah. So Um, we thank everybody for uh, for listening, contributing your your time and your thoughts towards this. But uh, as as we come to wrap up time here, um, it's 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 interesting to bookend you know um, uh, to bookend a discussion like this with uh, with a song of the week selection because uh, 
you know, I, I, I kind of thought of my song of the week, but now I'm thinking of another song because, you know, just the, the tenor and the space that I'm in having a discussion like this, uh, you know, didn't necessarily fit the song that I picked earlier. So, uh, do you have one, uh, do you have one squared away? Um, I have, here? I don't have, um, I'm kind of the same way. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm going to tailor the song choice a little more to, the mood of the the episode we just recorded so absolutely um do you i can have, get us started have, yeah so I'll I, say, I you can. get us started let me just let me just solidify yes. uh, where i so want to go I'll, I'll begin with mine and uh i'm i'm 98 percent certain that this is going to be the shortest song um on the song of the week playlist uh that is being curated as we speak but um it is a, it's a mad season song so it didn't make the original mad season record um but when i believe in 2013 when they released the 25th anniversary box set um they went back and they released a couple of uh, outtakes and a couple of recently finished songs they they had mark lanigan sing on a couple songs that uh um you know just hadn't had vocals attached to them and mark wrote lyrics and vocals but this one is entirely instrumental i can assume that it's mike mccready playing acoustic guitar because none of the other individuals in the band were um uh were acoustic guitarists but it is a uh, i believe it's the first the first song on the second disc of the deluxe uh 25th anniversary version and it's called interlude it's like a 32 mm-hmm. second um just kind of like acoustic picky type thing um but it's just really peaceful and i think um you know it's called interlude and i think it's perfect because that album you know the original album and you know the deluxe version that second disc there it's so heavy that you kind of need a nice little reprieve in the middle and and this song uh interlude is a uh, mike mccready masterpiece that not many people may know about so i challenge you to go and listen and you know, close your eyes for 30 seconds and, and take a listen. But, um, you know, that's one that, you know, is, is thought provoking in its own way. Uh, and the way that Mike plays on there is really, really peaceful. And, uh, you know, you can get a lot of, uh, a lot of emotion out of it. So that, that would be my song of the week. And, uh, um, I don't know if I'm going to challenge myself to pick something shorter because uh, that's 32 seconds is, is pretty short. So, uh, we'll roll with that. And I'm, I'm sure, uh, the length will get a little bit longer next week for me, but, uh, we're rolling with that's interlude. Fun. Awesome. That, that is, that is a great choice. Um, and yeah, very different. I like it. Um, so the song that I've, I've, I've chose is something, one of those songs that at the end of the day, when you just need to decompress, you just need to put something on that's going to take you away. It's on one. It's like it's like the bedroom playlist, like the lights off, candle on, uh, type of listening, where you just kind of like look up to the, you know, look up to the ceiling where you put all your star stickers, so you can look up, you know, the, you know the ones you had when you were a little kid that light light up. Oh yeah. Um, so you can just look in the outer space, but um, it's a song that we know very well and that people love, but it's it's going to be fade into you by Maisie Star. Excellent, her. and it is, you know, just an angelic voice um, singing, yeah, very, very, very soft, very just comforting, and um, you know, nice guitar, and it's just a song that really relaxes you and allows you to kind of decompress. And I think that um, that comes with, you know, that comes with difficult conversations. And you know, it's like I think we were going to record like the last two days, and sometimes you get out of situations. And you're just like, I need, I'm, emo-, you know, you're physically tired, but then a lot of times people get emotionally tired and it's like, I just can't, I got to like disconnect and I got to, I got to really just, you know, shut off the, the whole thinking thing. So, um, this song is always good for that fade into you. It just is such a, yeah, it's such a peaceful, relaxing song and, and you got to have those, you got to have a playlist full of those songs. So I'll put that on there and maybe we can post that. that that's always a good post on the page totally i i think i think we're gonna have to and uh you know kind of uh, in unison with with when this episode comes out is is just a reminder to everything that you said i think it is important sometimes to uh you know to take a take a second i mean the world is so interconnected now and we're always we're always online and we're always working and we're always you know yeah caring for other people that sometimes you just got to take a second and block all that out for a little bit listen to some music and uh you know care care for yourself and where you're at you know just take a just as we do every week on the podcast we do our check-in you got to check in yep. sometimes with yourself you gotta check in you also got to check out and that reminds me i think chris uh, your favorite week is coming up here soon 
uh, right around Thanksgiving, uh, something we do on the pot on the, uh, the the Grunge Bible Instagram once a year. <laughs> Absolutely, our week long vacation, the week of American Thanksgiving. Uh, we have historically, I think, for the last uh, three years, I want to say, uh, we have taken a week long vacation, and, and this year that is shaping up to be from uh, Sunday, November twenty first, two thousand twenty one, through Saturday, November twenty seventh, two thousand twenty one. So. Um, if all goes according to plan, which I think it will, we will be taking a vacation. Uh, we will not be posting uh, at all on the page, but I'm sure we'll have a podcast episode queued yeah. up for you um, we'll on the 26th. Yep, we'll, I would say we'll definitely have some podcasts, but no pressures and stepping away from the posting, which, like you said, is necessary. Here's so. the thing. If, if we can step away from... From Grunge Bible and the you know six hundred thousand people across the platforms that are in tune, you can take it. You can take a second and step away too, and it's important to do that and you know just to take some time away, a little siesta. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody again. Thank you, Chris. Thank you to our producer Drew uh, for yeah working with us, getting this done, and um, yeah, that's all I got. Any final remarks, Chris, before we? Uh, sign off for the week uh, no just um just echoing your your words of thanks you know uh right back at you uh over to drew and uh you know to everyone who's who's taken some time to listen today as we said you know we hope that you know you can there's maybe at least one thing in this episode that you're, you're able to take away and apply or or think about in a different way so uh if you guys can do that out there then we have done our jobs you know that's all we're setting out to do so with that being said uh thanks again ethan uh, i appreciated this and we will catch up with everybody next week uh on episode 36 but i think that'll uh that'll do it for number 35 heading out into the world rock and roll thank you thank you chris love you all Take care, everybody. Love you guys. Be well.